very warm welcome to your first workshop of the day. Thank you for your understanding with scanning and all that sort of thing outside. Um, so what works tolerance? Uh, I'll start by introducing ourselves. Uh, I'm Neil Matthews, I'm the Vice Principal uh, at GEMS First Point School, just uh, along the way. Um, I also lead on innovation in the school, which links quite closely to the topic of our, of our presentation this morning. Uh, and this is Simone Rapsi. Uh, I'll let Simone introduce herself. Perfect. So, you've chosen this workshop. Uh, it's about open mindsets. Uh, it's about uh, a particular an approach that we uh, have introduced at First Point, um, which is encouraging teachers and school leaders to slow down, um, which is a challenge in itself. Um, we all know that schools and education is a fastly changing um, system. Things change every day, and we are very quick to make judgments uh, as human beings. We are very quick to make judgments. Are you okay? Thank you. Very quick to make judgments about people that we see when we're interviewing. First impressions, very, very important. Uh, and often, a lot of our decisions are based on the first few seconds of meeting somebody or walking into a classroom, um, making an instant snap decision. And what we're trying to do at First Point um, is to encourage teachers and school leaders to slow down to spend time and to look at things more deeply by using an approach called slow looking. Now I will disappoint you straight away and say this is not rocket science, this is nothing new, but this is about people taking time out to slow down and look at things deeply. I'm going to start by showing you a video, it sounds not so good, but it will give you a bit of an insight into, watch it, watch it. Sorry. Okay, so as you saw, that, that video is from a, a, a project, a global project called Out of Eden Learn, um, which is funded and, and run by the Harvard School of Education. Um, for the last 18 months, um, First Point has been very lucky to be part of a, pro, a project called Project Zero, one of seven schools in uh, the GEMS network. Uh, and we've been working with researchers from Harvard School of Education 
to look at how to create a community of innovation um, within schools in Dubai. Uh, very exciting project. And that video sort of embodies slow looking in that it's about slowing down. Uh, it's about not just encouraging school leaders and teachers to look at things in depth, in detail, but as you can see, students also. If you're the sort of person that maybe goes to a museum, to an art gallery quite regularly, then you will be used to the notion of slow looking in terms of looking at something in depth. Uh, and what I'd like you to do this morning while we're presenting to you is to think in your current roles, in your workplace, in your classrooms, in your schools, is there something that is bothering you? Or is there something that you're responsible for that you'd actually like to spend more time looking at in a more deeper, more in-depth way? Because this approach today is a not rocket science, but allow yourself the time to step back and to have a look at it. So what we're going to do this morning is take you from sort of the literal, from, from what you can see, looking to looking something in, in, in a lot more detail. So we have a photograph. Um, and apologies for the light. I don't know how we can turn these off. Um, but it's a, a, a photograph which, we, we, if you walk around Dubai, and you probably see, sort of see these things quite, um, quite often. What we'd like you to do is just have a, have a brief conversation with the people next to you. We've got some post-it notes. You can jot things down. It's just for you to ask, okay, what sort of questions could you ask about this photograph? Okay, and what we're going to try and get from you here is, again, that, that, that you can ask, well, go over. How many camels can you see? Yeah, 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 we, can, we can see that. But then to think, hey, what, what deep questions could you ask? Uh, into going into, okay, well, maybe some why questions or how questions. So, so going beyond what you can see, going beyond the initial first glance to encourage people and encourage you to think about how deep could you go into this photograph. So what I'd ask you to do is spend about three or four minutes just, just with the people next to you, just jot some questions down uh, again, try and get a balance of the, 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 the literal questions to the ones we get a lot deeper, and we'll take a bit of feedback to see what sort of responses you come up with. Okay, so three or four minutes, just jot some ideas down. Thank you. Thank you. 
allowed us to try new approaches. We've introduced a new interdisciplinary curriculum that focuses on world problems. And this has had a big impact on the ethos of our school and the culture of our school because staff are more open to try new things, they're more open to explore, they pursue us in new approaches in the classroom. So just by stopping and slowing down, we've seen quite a big change in terms of the culture of our school and what goes on in our school. So we're just going to move on to an activity. So in front of you, you have one of our observations. Now, across the room, there are different observations. We've got them across all key stages. We have had some FS observations, all the way up to year 12 observations. So all I want you to do is I want you to look at the image, and I want you to think about what's going on in the classroom. What do you see? So if you could write what you see on the post-it note and then just place that onto the board. There's some questions on the board to help you think about, some of the, think about what you're looking at within the images. So think about what learning skills do you see? What are the children doing? If you could write them down and then stick them onto the post-it notes. Okay, so we're just going to stop there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap your boards with a different area of the school. So for example, if you have a year 12 classroom or a lower primary classroom, I'm going to swap that with an upper school classroom. And this time I want you to compare the differences. So what are the differences in the activities that you see? The learning skills that you see? How the lessons set out? and how the students are engaged, collaborating, and the different things that are going on. The difference is they were, they were working independently. What about the range of activities that were in the classrooms? Was there a range of activities in both classrooms? In year 12, there wasn't any lectures, and uh, the students were bored. There were, uh, for the they were sitting and they were doing the same exact thing for four minutes. Uh, okay. Okay. Focused and independent, okay? <laughs> okay, so do you think it's important or do you think it's essential? Why, why is the classroom different? Why is an FS classroom structured the way it is? And then why does it gradually change as the school progresses? Because of their learning differences. Okay.
Okay, but... Okay, so just going to go back to the point you made over here. So, for example, our students need to be prepared for the exam. They need to be prepared for the wide world of the world we work and be able to work with these pens in So, if I was to look at these classrooms in a row, I would argue that actually an FS classroom where the student is selecting an appropriate type of learning to what they enjoy, they're doing something that they're passionate about, they're working independently to do that, is far more beneficial. Be 